hot fifth grader. What are you doing, Mrs. Wally? We get to take our masks off when we are recording. It's so exciting. There's rules. There are a lot of rules, and oh. we are we are actually going beyond the rule. We are. So we are both vaccinated. Fully, two weeks after our second dose. We can only have our masks off when we are actually recording and doing our lesson. Mm -hmm. If there's a long period of time that one of us isn't talking, then we put our mask back on. Mm -hmm. And we have to be six feet or more apart. Mm -hmm. And Mr. Kevin just brought out the tape measure and we are further than six feet apart. We are. And just by a little bit. They had to help me because I keep stepping closer. I keep inching. She keeps inching closer and closer. So we've put some tape out put for Miss Lawson. I don't inch because I'm sitting. If I was standing, I'd be doing the same thing. <laughs> and just for the record, I'm 30 feet from you. Yes, yes you are. Mr. Kevin's really far, far away. away. So almost like in a whole nother room. Yeah. And we have some windows open for airflow. We do. So we're being really safe. We are. And careful. But it's and nice that out. we get to show you our faces. Yes. So you can probably hear us a little bit better mm -hmm. this way too. And as we're using big science words, it's important that you can actually hear us pronounce them correctly. Yes, that is important. Mm -hmm. And for our friends who are hard of hearing, they can read our lips better. Yes. Yeah. Yep. So, Yet another change coming your way from TV that's classroom. That's right. <laughs> but that's what makes us teachers, because mm -hmm. we're always changing and reevaluating and improving. Finding ways to be better. Always. So friends, before we begin, let's check in with our zones. We can do that. Hmm. Hmm. One, one How zone check-in coming today? right up. Mm -hmm. Miss Oslin, how are you doing today? I'm in the green zone. I was really responsible with my bedtime last night. Oh, that's so good. I know. And so I went to bed early and I actually slept really well. Um, so yeah, I'm in the green zone. I'm good to go. So I'm a little jealous about how well you sleep. I know. I have trouble sleeping. Yeah. And so I did get some sleep last night. I'm in the green. I'm just loving this setup. I'm loving having masks off to be able to teach so you guys can see us and hear us. Mm -hmm. My body's still in the blue zone. It's going to be in the blue zone for a long time. Mm -hmm. So I'm just having to live with that and there's just nothing I can do about it. So green zone, feeling good? Good. I'm really excited for this lesson. Yes. Mr. Kevin, how about you? Oh, thanks for asking. I'm in the green zone too. Feel pretty good today. <laughs> what? <laughs> She had to. <laughs> Miss Oslin's off screen. Miss Oslin. I know. I stepped I, outside my box. Well, well, you're kind of out. I don't. We'll have to play around with that. Well, it's a. There you go. It's a good thing that we are more than six feet apart, so we there can. There you do go. This. Lean in That's from right. the edge. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> we'll just see half of Miss Oslin's face. <laughs> That's funny. All right, friends. <sighs> Let's go over our three personal standards today and every day. Mm -hmm. We agree to. Show respect, respect make, make good decisions, decisions solve problems. problems. Uh oh, is this going to be one of those lessons, friends? Yellow zone a bit, Miss Oslin. A little bit, get okay. there. Okay, we'll I be all right. Hold it together, Mr. Kevin. You okay? <clears throat> I, I'm okay. okay. Okay, here we go. So, thinking about showing respect and making good decisions and solving a problem. Right, we got some feedback. We did. Mm hmm. And we thank David Scythe and Tammy Larson for their feedback. Because when we know better, we, do, we better. do better. They reminded us that the land we're on is part of a particular tribe yes. in the Salish Coast people. Yes, the Puyallup tribe. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The Puyallup, and um, they said to use the term the Puyallup tribe of Indians. Indians. Yep. So when we know better, we, do, we better. do better. So listen and see if you can figure out what changed after we received our feedback from the experts who know what they're talking about. Mm -hmm. I'm going to invite you to look outside your window. Look at the sky, look at the trees, look at the mountain if she's out. Our physical space stands on the historic and ancestral lands of the Puyallup tribe of Indians. We acknowledge the Puyallup tribe, their community, their elders, both past and present, as well as future generations. We make this acknowledgement as part of our work to dismantle the ongoing legacies of settler colonialism and white supremacy. Mm -hmm. All right. It's a nice change. It is, and it makes me feel better knowing that we are using our TV classroom platform to be accurate and give accurate information. And to show our friends at home what to do 
when you thought your information was accurate, but it wasn't all the way accurate. It wasn't. And so we were called into a conversation. Yep. And didn't feel great at first. Nope. Because we worked really hard. Because we worked really hard on that. And we really had to have a conversation about doing the right thing because it's the right thing to do, not because of my feelings. And how privileged, how much privilege we have to have the feeling that it was frustrating. How yes. that is a sign of the privilege that we have mm -hmm. as two white females. Mm -hmm. And how we need to listen to the people who this impacts and do it the way they want it to be done because mm -hmm. it's them we're talking about. Yep. So again, we thank you for the thank feedback. Thank you very much for your feedback. And we welcome any further feedback going forward. Always. Okay. The cycle of science. So good. The process of science. We've gone over it a lot. We, we do lots of asking questions and wonderings. We First do. you wonder, then you ask questions, then you start learning about it. Mm -hmm. Then after you do that, then you start coming up with some explanations yeah. and gathering data and looking at observations and interpreting them mm -hmm. and revising what you thought. Yes. And then you start to make conclusions and answer questions. Now there's another part. Bad. There's this little white dot on there. Yeah, let me and go back and find it where um, mm -hmm. you probably can't see it very well, but I can see it a little bit better on my computer. Mm -hmm. And this is where um, it's feedback and peer review. And this is what we do on Flipgrid. Yes. So if you come over to Flipgrid, you get to engage in this where you can comment back underneath someone's comment and ask them a question or respectfully push on their thinking mm -hmm. or ask for feedback. Now scientists, they submit their articles to all the other specialists all over the world and they review it and they decide <laughs> is your is your science sound did you use correct research practice did you answer your question they make sure you followed the scientific process and then they let you know if it's good or not and then that's when you publish it and it becomes mm -hmm. the new knowledge we have about a topic and we call that peer reviewed, reviewed. And it's important when you are looking for a resource on something that you find resources that are peer reviewed. They're right. checked by other scientists. Or they come straight from the source. We call that a primary, primary source. source. We got information from a primary source. We originally got our information from a secondary source for our land, um, acknowledgement. land acknowledgement. And then a primary source came to us and said, this is awesome. We need you to change a little bit. Mm -hmm. Practicing it. Right there, right there. Boop, boop, okay. Boop. Oh, have an observation. Ooh. Ooh. Take one mm. minute. What do you notice? What do you wonder? Hmm. Well, when we first looked at this photo, I was like, oh, how exciting. Look at that fish with all the fish eggs. Right, it's ready to spawn. It's ready. And then I uh, noticed it's dead. That's not great. I also noticed that they're out in the wilderness, and it doesn't look like they killed it on purpose. Yeah. So I'm wondering if they found this fish dead. Mr. Kevin, do you have any noticings or wonderings? Well, I was thinking the same thing, actually, that they probably found this fish because I don't think, you know, legally you can't catch a fish that's spawning, that's going to spawn, right? Right. You can't catch a female spawning. Like, I think there's rules about what mm -hmm. fish you can yeah. catch and when you yeah. can catch them. Yes. Right. You can catch, but then you have to release. Mm. Right. And then there's a certain point at which, like, they open the salmon season and you can fish in certain places for just mm -hmm. a certain amount of time. And I don't know what the rules and regulations are with the Department of Fish and Wildlife, but there are rules and regulations right. for that. Yes. Yeah. Rightfully so. Okay. Okay. We have a video. It's, it's hard to watch. It's hard to watch. So I want you to prepare yourself. But it's important. It's important to watch because this is what's happening. 
Okay. And it's important for you to see it to understand it. So know if you kind of feel like, oh, that is really sad. It's a really okay feeling. And I feel the same way. Mm -hmm. But we need that in order to understand the action we need to take. Before they can spawn, salmon in this Seattle Creek are dying. Look at that. I mean, fit, gasping for air. Fish don't gasp for air. A vital cycle cut short. There's a high correlation in this pre-spawn mortality phenomenon in urban creeks where there's a lot of stormwater pollution. Here is a bright coho. Definitely pre-spawn. Salmon spend years at sea, then migrate up streams or rivers where they reproduce. But with increased development, more metals, pesticides, and other pollutants are ending up in the runoff from the rain. We at the same rate, we're developing more and more of the upper watershed. So the, the worry is that we'll start to see this phenomenon further and further into the watershed and into our most important salmon river. So Chum. At this hatchery near the Puget Sound, scientists are exposing salmon to contaminated water to find out exactly what's killing them. They collected runoff from a busy Seattle highway. So we expect all of these fish will be dead by tomorrow, but we may in fact see some mortalities before that, at the four hour time point. And that's what happens after a few hours. No, nah, he's gone. That's to decrease toxicity in the runoff, researchers are also treating the water and testing filtering systems. Well, there's just a bit of mulch on top, but then it's a mix of I'll let you in, it's a mix of gravel and compost. The result this time more promising. Well, I've been kicking and wanting out badly. An experiment that could help not just salmon in the Pacific Northwest, but fish in other streams and lakes around the country. Robert Bumstead, Associated Press. Mm. <sighs> What did you notice? What did you wonder? Miss Oslin? Hmm, that made me sad. I wondered why don't we filter that water? Yeah. If we know that we're having such an impact, why can't we put a filter where it exits? Mm -hmm. There has to be a reason. Mm -hmm. Or can we do something before the water gets dirty? Right. But we, we have to move around and it's caused by all these cars and... Right. So what do we, how can, mm, it's hard. It's hard. It makes me sad though. Yes. And the more people that move here, I feel like the worst it's gonna get. Mm -hmm. So why are salmon important to the Salish Sea? We're gonna continue the next couple weeks thinking about how scientists are able to f solve these problems. Mm -hmm. Like, why can't we filter it? Why can't we do something before the water gets dirty? Or what is making the water dirty? Mm -hmm. And then they're able to solve these problems. And we're gonna do some reading of articles and watching of some videos. We're gonna be comparing these different types of media or texts to learn. I'm excited. I am too. Okay. Here we go. This is my cue. It's it my is. big moment <laughs> for our big, big science, science word. Dur, 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 <laughs> We learned the word interdependent. When interdependent two, when two, two or more, more things meet each other. We learned about the intertidal zone. Ooh, yeah, that's where the, sh the um, shore area exposed between high tide and low tide. It's where all those creatures have to sit and just wait for the water. <laughs> <laughs> we learned about a habitat, which mm -hmm. is the natural environment of a plant or animal. It's their home. Mm -hmm. And then we learned about conservation. Ooh. That's the act of keeping and protecting from waste, loss, or destruction. And that has something to do with what we're gonna be talking mm -hmm. about. We also learned about migrate. Yes. You know what, I got to see Mr. Wally's grandma and grandpa this last weekend, and I told them that I used them as an example for migrate because they migrate down to Arizona mm -hmm. in the wintertime and back to Seattle, Tacoma area in the springtime, and they yes. thought that was really funny. <laughs> so that's the act of moving from one region to another. We learned about an ecosystem. We talked a lot about how ecosystem and habitat are very similar but there are things that are different. And they really work together. They do. Mm -hmm. An ecosystem is a community of living things together with their yeah. environment. And then incubate. 
but just when we are learning about spawning and the migration of salmon, and that's to keep something warm until it's time to hatch. And they spawn in the red to keep their salmon eggs the perfect temperature until mm -hmm. it's time for them to hatch. And it's important to have native plants around where the red uh -huh. is, R-E-D-D, -D, so that there's it's not too um, hot from the sun to provide right. shade. And the water temperature and the water quality also impacts that. Mm -hmm. So that's what we're going to talk about today. Yes. We're going to do some thinking about hmm. what I think I know about human impacts on salmon and what we want to learn more about human impacts on salmon. Go ahead, get out your journal. I'm going to be writing in mine. Track down a few things. Maybe one minute. What do you think? Yeah. Let's do a minute. What did you say, Miss Austin? Okay, I was thinking, I think I know that humans have a detrimental impact on salmon. Do you know what I wrote? What? Humans have negatively impacted the salmon in the Salish Sea. You defined detrimental. <laughs> I sure did. That's so great. Hmm. Hmm. So then, what did you want to know then? I did another, <laughs> this is one of those moments where my brain misfired i did another think i know oh that's okay <laughs> on my want to know okay but i can add a want to know i okay. said some people are trying to reverse that impact and i want to know how yeah yeah what about you i wanted to know how i as a one per i am one person mm -hmm. and maybe i can have some influence over my family but that's not a lot of people no and this is a big problem and it's a big problem so it feels like I can't really help. And I think that's what leads to there being more issues because everyone feels like they can't help so nobody does anything. So I'm just not gonna do anything. So what can I do, I guess, right. would what be can my we do question. In Tacoma to help our salmon here in Tacoma. Yes. Hmm. Here we go. In the Salish Sea. Okay. Okay. Correct. <sighs> Which one are we doing first? We're doing the article first. Okay. And we're going to do the video after the, la the next. Thank you. After okay. when we're all done. Behind the so scenes. So, friends, what we're doing is we're just going to read part of this article, just part, today, and have some conversation around it. And then next week, our first episode of next week, we're going to finish the article and then watch a video about some of the impacts and some, some ideas of things we can do. Do you want to zoom in it? Do you want to open it in the actual um, desktop app? Yes. And I then we can that. zoom into it? Yes. I think that that, then friends can see the words and we can zoom in really close. Mm -hmm. And then do you know how to unpin that um, taskbar mm -hmm. there? See the little pin on the right hand side? Yeah. And then you can make well, it even bigger. You. Ready? You can make it as wide as hey, the screen. Look at that. Oh, yeah. Ta-da! That'll be good, won't it, Mr. Little, Kevin? A little too wide there. Too, too wide? wide? Yeah. You've gone too uh, far, Mrs. Oslin. <laughs> Here, let me Wait. show you what it looks like. So she so gets some words that are cut off just okay. a hair. Okay, so we're going to out there just you, a little bit. Yeah, there oh, you go. Oh, perfect. All good. right. It should say okay. Anne. Because and it's ubiquitous? A, yeah, instead of A, because it's a vowel. I wonder if it's because the noun starts with a consonant. Maybe, but I thought it was just the next word. Oh, you know where my mind went? Is the word hour always gets me because it's half an hour because it starts with a vowel sound. But I say half, 
like if I was going to describe, so it would be an adjective. It would be a half hour, not an half hour. Yes, you would say half an hour or a half hour. So, so this would be a, a an ubiquitous yes. tire rubber derived chemical induces acute mortality in coho salmon. Hold up, what? <laughs> mm. Right? What is a, how did you say that word? Ubiquitous? Ubiquitous. What does that ubiquitous. mean? Did I say it's U with a long U Ubiquitous. Sound? That's, ubiquitous. Why they, that's why they don't say an. Because it's U. It's not a. Because it's U. It's a not U. ubiquitous. Yeah. Look at us go. There we go. Mm -hmm. A ubiquitous. Analyzing tech. It's so mm -hmm. important. A ubiquitous tire rubber. What does ubiquitous mean? Everywhere. Oh. It's a Something tire that's rubber everywhere. that's used everywhere. everywhere. Okay, so it's a ubiquitous tire rubber derived chemical. So it's a chemical in the tire rubber. Mm -hmm. It induces, Deuces. which means starts. Acute mortality, which means like sudden death. In coho, coho salmon. salmon. Oh. Mm. It's sad. Sad. But this is a huge problem as we've learned the importance all of this mm -hmm. time of the Salish Sea and the salmon, they're dying. Mm -hmm. like, that's a problem. Mm -hmm. It impacts so many people and so much of our ecosystem and so many of the mammals in our Salish Sea. Mm -hmm. There's a long list of scientists there who contributed to this paper. Mm -hmm. And it was written the 3rd of December, 2020. This was really recent. This was during winter break. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. So really just recently happened. So this is a very scientific paper that we together are going to work, work through to read over several lessons. So we can understand it so that we can learn what we need to do. Think come up with a plan. For the impacts, the human impacts, impacts on, on salmon. salmon. Ooh. Would you like to read or would you like me to read? Uh, you can pick. I I'll start and then okay. I'll kind of stop and you can go. Okay. For decades, there has been a mystery plaguing the urban streams of the Puget Sound region near the Salish Sea. Decades. Just stop there in the, the topic sentence. Mm -hmm. Decades. That means tens not, of tens of years. It means not just a yeah. few years. This has been going on for a long time. Something has been creating a dramatic effect on migrating salmon, especially the coho salmon. And then they say its scientific name, and I'm not close enough to be able to, to figure that out. I can't quite read it from this far away. On Corkincus, on Corkincus, Kisich. We'll have to look that is up. Is my attempt at the, the Latin What word. do you think, Mr. Kevin? On the Latin of that, oh, I'm sorry, I caught you when you weren't looking at the screen. Let's the see. The Latin name of that, of coho salmon. Yeah, it's tough for me to read. Yeah. On, Encore Heinkus? Heinkus? Mm -hmm. Encore Heinken? We'll yeah. have to look it up and put it into yeah, a we'll pronunciation yes. software. Coho are born in rivers. We knew that. Mm hmm And when they're young, they migrate to the ocean to grow into fat adults. We know that, too. We knew that. They spend much of their lives in the ocean growing and becoming strong. And then when rainwaters swell rivers in the Pacific Northwest, they begin to migrate back to the fresh water to spawn in the creeks of their births. We knew that too. We knew that. It's a lot of work. Mm -hmm. We knew that. We've learned that. Mm -hmm. And this journey is made more difficult in the Puget Sound. So they already have something hard to do. Yes. And something in the Puget Sound is making it more even difficult. more difficult. Mm -hmm. The salmon are entering the rivers filled with lots of runoff from urban stormwater. The water that runs over the roads and into the storm drains that drain into the creeks. I want to so stop there. I was just going to say the authors defined what urban storm drain is for us, or urban storm water. Right. It's part of the next sentence. So stop there. Have a moment to think. What have we confirmed about our knowledge so far mm -hmm. about salmon? And what is the issue that they're talking about? Take one minute, 
maybe jot down a few things that we've read. Go back and look and see if you can figure out what have you confirmed that you thought you know. And what are we talking about? Because sometimes when you get this far and you don't know, you have to stop and go back. Yeah. Okay, one minute of think time. Ready? Go. Awesome. Okay, so this did a lot of confirming for me about the life cycle of a salmon. Yes, me too. Uh, that makes me feel good, knowing that we were on the right track. Um, and then it's talking about how the runoff from urban stormwater. So that makes me think more about the negative impacts that humans have mm -hmm. on salmon. Because and my, we, we live in an urban area. We like do. Think about where we are here in Tacoma. Mm -hmm. So my wondering is, uh, what is it that's in the stormwater that's make, causing these problems? And I put, how do we stop that water from running off? Mm -hmm. Like, if we know that's the runoff's the problem, can we divert the water somehow? Mm -hmm. Like, like I'm already to like, let's make a solution. That's where my brain always goes. Mm -hmm. I have a hard time sometimes reading these articles and getting further because I'm like, ready, it's a problem, all right, let's find a solution. I don't need to know any more information, let's right. go. Right. And that's, that's a downfall of my brain that I need to understand why before I make a solution because mm -hmm. I might find my answer in the why. Yep. So anyway, but that's just the way my brain works. So, all right. So it goes into creeks, rivers, and bays. So that's a lot of places. Mm -hmm. Here they are gasping for air, swimming in circles, and dying in just hours. So they're fine in the ocean. They come into the bays and the creeks and river and bam, mm -hmm. they die. So it's not taking a long time. It's happening acutely, like I said in the title. Oh, quickly. It's happening quickly, a few hours by the time they get into the freshwater. This is making me think about the video that we watched at yes. the beginning where you could see the salmon gasping for air. <gasps> this has been coined the term urban runoff mortality syndrome or URMS. Now something to note, They've defined for us what URMS is. Mm -hmm. It is Urban Runoff Mortality Syndrome. You need to remember that because from now on in this article, mm -hmm. they're going to refer to it as URMS mm -hmm. to make it easier for them to write and more succinct, which mm -hmm. means when you see URMS, you need to remember that that means Urban Runoff Mortality Syndrome. It means the salmon are dying when they enter the streams. I have a personal connection as a writer. You do, okay. I do. So when I was writing a couple years ago for my national board certification, they give you a limit. You can only have right. so many pages, but they have a lot of criteria or questions that you have to answer. So you have to be able to answer them using as few characters as you can. So we often, mm -hmm. and so we could use acronyms like URMS, that's an acronym, that's shortening it using the beginning letter. But you have to define it first. You cannot, just like they did. Just like they did. You cannot make assumptions that someone's reading your paper, even if they're a scientist, even if they're in education, like I am, that they know what you're talking about. That's right. So be clear, define it, but then continue to use the acronym. And they've done that here. They've mm -hmm. defined it for us and then given us the acronym. Mm -hmm. So now when we see that acronym, you're going to see it here in a minute. You know what it means. Mm -hmm. Between 40 to 90% of the returning salmon are dying from URMS. In about 40% of land in the Puget Sound region. I'm going to read that again. Oh. Ms. Austin, you have a like shocked look on your face. Mm -hmm, because I think I understand what it's saying. Okay, I'm going to read it one more yeah. time. So it says between 40 to 90% of the returning salmon are dying from URMS in about 40% of the land in the Puget Sound region. 
So they're saying in the Puget Sound region, if we take 40% of the streams and rivers, in that 40%, 40 to 90% of those salmon are dying when they enter? We, the, there's a word for that, disproportionate. Yes. Because you would think if it was 40% of the rivers, then 40% of the salmon. Oh no, I think it's saying 40 to 90% of the returning salmon die in a smaller area. Is, are they saying 40 to 90% of the entire population of salmon or are they saying 40 to 90% of the salmon that return to that 40%? I think 40 to 90% of the salmon that return to that 40%. Okay. So it's disproportionate because yeah. that's a lot of salmon dying in just a, in sm just small, a space. small space and then other salmon that return to other places are not having this impact. Yes. I or wonder, that's my understanding. I wonder if they've tracked which salmon. I, mm, I have lots mm -hmm. of questions. Mm -hmm. The scientists in this study asked why is this happening? They started with the question, we go. why is this happening? And even more importantly, what is the chemical killing the salmon? Finally, they solved it. Oh. We're going to do that. To this mystery. We're going to do that teacher move. We are. That makes students go, no! <laughs> We're not reading any more today, friends. Not today. You'll have to come back next week. Mm -hmm. But let's talk about what we've just read. Yeah. I'm still curious. I'm still not sure I'm clear on if, because of the way they wrote the sentence. Right. If it's 40 to 90% of the returning population salmon to the Pacific Northwest, or is it 40 to 90% of the population that only returns to those streams? Oh. Do you see what I'm saying? Of the returning salmon. Hmm. So it says, yes. of the returning salmon. So I think it's of the whole population. I think so too. Because it's saying 40 to 90% of the returning salmon die from URMS and about 40% of the land. That's what made me think that it was disproportionate. So I think you're right. I think it's the whole population. We're losing 40 to 90% of it in 40% of our streams and rivers. That's yeah. really scary. That That's is. a huge issue. It's huge. A huge issue. 90%. That means if there are 100 salmon, <laughs> 10 live. Friends. Kind of reminds me of that game that you played the yeah. other day. Uh, yeah, that's not enough to feed our orcas. Mm -mm. That's not enough. I mean, that's even going out, but coming in, that's not enough to have enough spawning salmon to spawn enough young mm -hmm. to then come out and become more food for the salmon. It's not enough. We won't be able to continue the life cycle. Mm -hmm. It will die out at that rate. I had a question. Mm -hmm. This article is specific to coho. Ooh, what about what, other salmon? What about other salmon? Is it because other salmon aren't returning to these places? This for, is it, is it the only places that coho salmon go? Or, Cause it does it, does it say coho salmon or does it say salmon? It's coho. It, but says, it says especially the coho. Right, but it says 40 to 90% of the returning salmon. Is it the coho salmon or is it all returning salmon? See, I have questions. So my question is, is there something specific about the genetics of the coho salmon? Mm. Or like we said, is it because this is only where coho salmon go? That's a good question. I don't know. So what should our friends do on TikTok this week? On Flipgrid? I meant on Flipgrid. <laughs> I said TikTok. I'm sorry, friends. Mrs. Wally's brain. I'm telling you. <laughs> it's kind of like TikTok. You film a little one minute video, tell us what you think. <laughs> But it's not. It's Flipgrid. Sorry, friends. You could, yeah, you could do that. On you could make it like a TikTok video on Flipgrid. Yeah, you totally could. Make a little salmon dance about mm -hmm. how it's happening. You're thinking, oops, and now that's, I'm in the... That's a pretty cool little uh, graphic you got going there, <laughs> Mrs. Oslin. She's going to fix it. She knows what to do. I know Ooh, what to do now. That. Watch, here it comes. Dun, dun, dun. Bada boom, bada bada bing. Bing. On Flipgrid. On that was my Flipgrid. problem. I didn't have the graphic to remind me, and I said TikTok. <laughs> On Flipgrid, fifth graders, you are going to do some thinking about what are ways you can improve water quality for salmon. Or what questions? I kind of like the questions idea better. Can we switch do our both. assignment? Do all of it. Do whatever do all of you it. want. Whatever you want. Because if they know, 
go for it. Do if it. If you have some ideas already, thinking mm -hmm. about, as like I did, it kind of started jumping to yep. solutions. If you have some ideas for solutions, share those with us. If you want to talk about the questions that are forming because of what you've already learned, way to be a scientist, yeah. share that with us. Comment down below and let's take our collective knowledge and see what we can learn from each other. Yes. And then we'll continue reading next time yes, to learn gonna, what they found. We're going to read about the mystery of I'm so the excited. salmon. I apologize if you can hear the lawnmower outside. Oh, it's very loud. Us. So apologize about that. If you're not comfortable posting on Flipgrid or TikTok. <laughs> we don't have you post on TikTok, friends. <laughs> Only Flipgrid. <laughs> Mr. Kevin is going to tell you two other ways that you can share us your thinking. Mm -hmm. Well, certainly, fifth graders, why don't you just uh, open up your laptop right now, if it's not open already, and email us at TV Classroom at tacoma.k12.wa.us. Woohoo! Or you can always mail something in the regular mail, like draw a picture of a salmon, right? And uh, put my face on it. <laughs> <laughs> a salmon with glasses and curly hair. That'd be funny. And then send it to us at TV Classroom, 601 South 8th Street, Tacoma, Washington, 98405. All right, friends. It's time for our affirmation. Whew. This was... I think I have a good one. Okay, I'm excited. Okay. So we saw some graphic images that could have were been disturbing. Uncomfortable. Could have been uncomfortable, disturbing. Uh, but I think it's important for us to remind ourselves that I can be part of the solution. Yes. We need to acknowledge that we're it's part happening. of the problem. It's happening. But I am also oh, part of the solution. Yes. I love that idea. So let's so all take a deep breath together and say our affirmation. I, I can be part, part of the, of the solution. solution. Oh, can we do it again? Because I said I can be and I needed to say I am. Why does it need to say I am? Because can be is passive. It means I could choose to do it or not. Mm -hmm. And I need to be active and say that I am part. Love it. Okay. I am part <laughs> of the solution. <laughs> I'm just creating problems here. One more time. We're going to take a deep breath. Deep breath first. I, I am part, part of the, of the solution. solution. All right, Excellent friends. Good job today, fifth graders. We hope you have a great rest of your day, and we'll we look forward to seeing you back here next time in our TV I'll classroom. I'll see you on Flipgrid. Rules. One, you have 10 seconds to pick your crewmate. Two, a new timer will appear with an exercise for the crewmate you picked. Three, you will get points for each correct crewmate and exercise you choose. Four, if you pick the imposter, you will lose all your points. Five, use your math skills to see how many points you can get. Good luck.